this Mass conference will now be recorded. Half the group. It's recording. Okay. Um, there should be a gallery view. Some people are seeing everybody. I'm only seeing six people, including myself, and I don't know why. Um, so we're just going to have to muddle through and make the best of it. But uh, it sounds like Pam and, and Jamie, you can see everybody. Yes, yes there's on. Okay, so you, you may have to help direct traffic a little bit. Okay. Okay, so we are going to call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum. It's 7.36, let's say. Um, do we have TV 79? Or do you no. no, so you're just doing the recording and that's that. Okay, thank you. We will send okay. Them. okay, so we'll call this to order. And as far as uh, running this meeting this evening, as you all know, this is a first time doing it by video and using this technology. Uh, the meeting is open to the public. Um, it looks like from the phone callers, we do have um, members of the public in attendance who are able to, to listen. Uh, with guidance of our town administrator, we solicited public comment via emails to Pam in advance. We will not be taking public comment um, you know, live at, at, this, at this time because this was a first effort to do it. We did want to provide the opportunity to get feedback given the current situation with the park, but we, we did not receive any. So that will be the agenda. Uh, Jamie has the opportunity to mute everybody. Um, hopefully people can kind of control background noise and whatever. If not, she can mute everybody. And then when you speak, you get a pop-up to unmute yourself to speak, as I recall. That's how it works. So we will make the best of this and see if we can get through. I really do wish I could see everybody. That would help. But uh, the first order of business are the minutes from our February meeting. Uh, does anybody have any comments or corrections? This is this is Mike. I have one change on page two. <clears throat> that last paragraph just before the next section, which has discussion and take action on Paddle Hut. Okay. So the one where it's referring to my response to a member of the public. Mm -hmm. At the end of that paragraph, it says, um, Mr. Scrow encouraged the commission to look at the renovation timeline presented so that the document could be implemented into the FAQ as well. Uh, I would just suggest you just change the wording to so that the document, uh, or so that the timeline could be added to the FAQ. Okay. Just to, so that somebody doesn't misinterpret that where implement means build. Got it. And that was all I had. Okay. Anybody else? Um, Susan Daly. Go ahead, Susan. Okay. Um, just beneath that, there was this whole discussion we had with Jim Puglin about the paddle, hut rules, and regulation. And said if I, it says, Mrs. Ms. Daly asked if paddle court rentals include the hut. And I think the clarification that I was trying to make there was regarding if people that weren't part of the party would be able to use the restrooms. You know how we said that uh, you didn't have to rent all five courts to use, you know, rent the, the paddle hut itself. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where the, um, so I thought um, if we could change it to, Daly asked if the paddle court rentals include exclusive use of the hut, period. Uh, and then just say and that that was the question, and then I think just keep that simple. And then Mr. Coglin confirmed that the court users would have access to the restrooms. So he answered the questions by saying that they always had you know, access to the bathrooms and the fire pit, even if they weren't part of the party. So that's what there was, and I don't think it was just too much there that didn't. Okay. Got it. Okay. You got that, Jamie? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I just had a couple of very minor things on page five in the director's report. 
uh, the first sentence, Bill Cavers, it's spelled C-A-V-E-R-S. Okay. And then further down, um, you know, we finish up and there's a section about um, the Harbor Commission and it says the privacy concern with the sticker and the personal phone numbers. Mm -hmm. And then the next sentence is Miss Geary reported that the something sweet, it just, it was like, I was sort of like, I can, it was just like, I was sort of like, so I think maybe just make that a new paragraph. Is it just the red, if I just kind of, when you read it, it just seems to totally change topics unexpectedly. Okay. Any other comments? Any other comments? Okay. Then we will take a motion to approve the, the minutes as corrected. I'll make a motion, Susan Daly. I'll second. Amy, thank you. Okay, now to conduct the vote, what we need to do, especially because we can't see everybody, is that Jamie will call each person's name and then you need to vote yes or no. Does that include you, Lori? Yes. Does that include you, Lori? Okay, so Lori, do you approve? Yes. Sarah? Yeah. I wasn't there. Am I allowed to vote? Yeah. I wasn't there. Am I allowed to vote? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mike? Yes. Mike? Okay. Tier? Yes. Tier? Mary Louise? Yes. yes. And I don't. Is Lucy on? Such a big hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's everyone. Okay, so we're set. Okay, as I noticed, uh, we or noticed early, noted early, we did not have, receive any public comment. Correct, Pam, other than the notice about uh, the dog issue at Woodland? Correct. Do you want to paraphrase that? Well, the comments were supposed to come in before 9 a.m. makes a difference. Oh, that came out in later? This is in the afternoon. Okay. Okay, so we'll hold that, but it may come up in discussion later on. Okay, so next we thought we would have a, a general discussion on the steps taken uh, during the COVID outbreak. Uh, see if people have questions, comments, Pam included in the packet, a timeline of the different steps that were taken by our first selectmen as the situation evolved and circumstances changed. You know, currently, as you know, the parks are closed to vehicular traffic. Uh, that seems to, at least the parks I've visited, seems to have cut back on attendance quite considerably. But uh, any questions, comments from the commission members? No? Any uh, feedback you're getting from your friends and neighbors that you uh, can share? Uh, Lori, it's Mike. I, I have two things. People First, have, if, I I could just add, if I could just add, if I could just ask that folks keep their phones on mute, their microphones on mute unless they're speaking, because we're starting to get echoes. I don't know what call three is, but it seems like maybe, given that that box keeps lighting up, that maybe it's coming from that. But in any case, um, in terms of feedback I've gotten, uh, kind of direct, directly related, uh, I'm hearing that um, there's more than a few instances of folks walking with dogs off leash at Woodland. And in fact, I spoke with somebody this evening who was at Woodland and there were a couple of people with dogs off leash, three different people with dogs off leash. And um, this individual made a mention of following the regulations, 
one person complied and the other person pushed back and didn't comply. So, uh, uh, you know, I think folks understand and know that I'm kind of on the record as being supportive of, of you know, w where we've allowed dogs off leash. Uh, but um, I think it's an issue in Woodland and in Selix where we're allowing folks, we're keeping those parks open specifically under difficult circumstances. And um, I, I think that's an issue. And if folks are not complying with, you know, with the rules, I, I think it's an issue that we should take very, very seriously. And people should not be abusing the rules, shouldn't otherwise be abusing the rules, but absolutely not abusing the rules under these unique circumstances. So I, I guess I, you know, I, I, I take a very strong position on that. I, I agree, Mike, because uh, on uh, Susan Daly, if you can't see me, um, I've been seeing on social media a lot of reports about that. In fact, one person posted that her husband got bitten by one of the dogs at Woodland Park a few days ago. And I asked her on social media to submit an email to Pam and report it to the police. And tonight she just sent the email to Pam, I think, about the incident. I'm confused. I saw your response to her, Pam. She has to come in to fill out a report. Her letter is not an incident report. Do you need to do something separate as a resident if something like that happens? Well, there's a separate report for it. And Don had also um, recommended that you talk to one of the captains and, and meet and meet up with the animal control officer to fill out a report with them as well. If she's not comfortable doing that, as you read the email, she can, I, I would encourage her to fill out an incident report that we have on file. I think she, for her, like the sense I got from you know, just back and forth was that she was very concerned for her husband's health and trying to get him medical attention during these times. Mm -hmm. She's kind of like overwhelmed. So she didn't exactly like, you know, wasn't running around. She did post it on Facebook. Obviously, she was upset enough mm -hmm. to do that in the conversation about dogs at Brooklyn and about dogs running up to people, uh, especially kids that were very alarmed off leash. And, you know, especially with, you know, not knowing what's going on. And then the owners would then come get their dogs and the kids would be right there. You know, so it's kind of the social distancing is not happening. That takes place. So I'm very concerned about it um, as a safety, especially since we already have a dog. Park. So I don't know. We can't we can't force them to. It's just encouraging them to. And I certainly am, am very happy that they emailed in and that will certainly put it on record as well but i'm not talking about that just the way the reporting went on i'm talking about what are we going to do i mean i know that they put police at the beaches to, to get people to stop congregating at the beaches but even though the parking lot is closed but for woodland there's no such action and you know mike is going as a private citizen well, as a commissioner and you know he's there and he's telling people to do stuff we don't have any sort of enforcement or even any you know so people are just doing what they need to do with their dogs and now that all this space has to be shared is, I think I shared with you, um, Pam, most of the parks at, I mean, like in, I think it was, we, we said New Canaan and Greenwich are closed entirely, not just parking lots. So, you know, I'm not sure, you know, there's a lot of, you know, volume that's occurring at our parks. I'm not saying it's like towns, but I'm saying there's less places for people to go. So we have to be very considerate of others. If we can't have people um, keep their dogs on leash, it's not safe for anybody. What I would suggest is that I have a separate conversation with Don and see if we can get the animal control officer on call at Woodland Park because Selix Woods seems to be under control and perhaps we can get them get him back on a couple times a week, um, maybe even daily if it's if it's a big problem there, especially with a, a dog bite. I think we should, you know, if he, I mean, I know, I, I mean, I think he's still essential. I think we had a conversation on him yeah, that he's considered non-essential, but I really feel like public safety is always essential. So I'm not sure why he would have been told he's non-essential. So, you know, you know if it's only no. one part, I'd like to see the fact that. It's Mike. And, oh, sorry, Susan. That's okay. I'm done. Thanks. Mike. Yeah. It, so it's Mike and, and Pam. Maybe you may want to consider maybe another blast through Facebook and Instagram as a reminder. And um, you know, and I know that Jamie uh, Stevenson has been pretty blunt in reminding people that 
you know, um, we all have a responsibility here. And if there are certain of us that are not taking that responsibility seriously, we're going to screw it up for our neighbors. So I think it's a moment to be direct. And so, you know, I'll leave it to you to word it, but I think a, re a strong reminder telling people there's an opportunity here that, you know, something that folks are enjoying may not be available if it's not taken seriously. Um, may be in order. I, I leave it, if anybody objects to that, I'm open to that also, but I, I think it needs to be taken seriously. Yeah, I concur completely with Mike. I continue, and this bleeds into uh, the next agenda item, but I continue to see dogs both on and off leash down at Weed Beach. I'm down there most days, and I agree. Uh, we have rules in place, and right now, if they cannot be strictly adhered to, then, you know, I, I have no hesitation recommending to Jamie that we take the next step and, you know, just have no dogs on any of the properties until the situation is over. I mean, if people aren't going to comply, they weren't complying to begin with, and I have zero tolerance for this right now. Just by way of background, when I was doing the research about what other towns are doing, Westport has one park that they typically let dogs go off leash in the north end of the park called Winslow. And they've suspended that right at this point, you know, so they don't have off leash, a traditionally off leash park. So, I mean, there is other towns that are moving, you know, understanding that there are times when there's going to be more heavy usage. They've made a decision to do that. So there's no off leash there now. Amy, do you have any observations from Cherry Lawn? You have to unmute, unmute yourself. Amy, unmute yourself. Yeah, I don't have any observations about the dogs, but I, I'm listening carefully to your conversation and um, I'm reminded of our initial um, closing of the parks and how a few people had kind of uh, not played by the rules, so to speak, or the conditions. And it was unfortunate because then everybody, we lost the usage of our parks because people weren't social distancing. They were overusing the tennis courts and, uh, and gr grouping together. Um, so I, I sort of feel like this is where it's going and it's really unfortunate. You know, it'd be nice for people to be able to run with their dogs in the areas that we've allowed for them to, to do that. Um, so I'm sorry to see it go, but if you can't play by the rules and conditions, then we have to we have to be consistent with them. So Pam, as a next step, do you want to do you think we should put, as Mike suggested, firm firm language out on um, various social media sites and on the town website? I agree with that. And to clarify that if um, you know, we continue to have these observations in the next week to 10 days that, you know, we'll have to take, you know, more restrictive measures. Well, interestingly enough, I had made five, five or six signs for Stellix Woods, uh, more so than the signs that we put at Woodland. And granted, I think they have more support, volunteer support to help moderate, um, the park at Sellex Woods than we do at Woodland, but I think it would be worth having a few more strict signs at Woodland as well as this strong message on social media. So I certainly can take care of that as well. And also try to get, I think, chip back at Woodland specifically during this time to try to enforce it better. Yeah, I think that's a good idea if we can uh, pursue doing that. Sure thing. Any more uh, comments on the, uh, we were still on agenda item four, which was just the general activity and usage of the parks during the outbreak. No, everybody's set. Um, I just have one thing and it's, it's very minor for Pam. Um, and this is something that I think that you'll probably have to wait to do until after everything's over. But people, I live near the high school, and people are riding bikes back on Diller. 
and I don't think you probably want that. Right. They're put so there are ruts in the path from where they're going if they're bigger bikes. Um, so I think that's something you'll probably need to add another sign on there mm -hmm. below, mm -hmm. like where you have no dogs allowed. Right. Thank you for that. Sarah, are you observing any dogs um, in Diller? Uh, there have been, yes. So uh, not not that many, but people do bring them back there. Um, regarding Diller, I've also seen dogs. Um, and I've also noticed I've gone to, to walk there several times. One of the, the uh, boards on the through the wetlands is already broken, unfortunately. It's a little bit of a um, it's a little bit, I wouldn't say dangerous, but it's a little concerning. So you may want to send somebody out there to look. It's sort of a narrow walkway anyway. Um, it's very <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. It is very narrow. Yeah, it's, it's very narrow. Through the, yeah, I, I, we could almost use a third board in there or a fourth board because it's very tight. And then one is already broken. So I will get in touch with the park crew tomorrow. Thank you. Also, all the trash was cleaned up. Thank you for that. Christmas trees, bed frames. I will, thank, I will thank the park crew for that. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Okay, uh, then we'll, uh, next time we, we've been talking about dogs a bit, but uh, next time on the agenda has a debrief about the winter dog walking program at Weed Beach. I mean, we've talked about dogs Generally, I would say that, you know, my observations, which I shared over the winter with Pam, and I think at different commission meetings, now, see, now I see Mary Louise, look at that, is that um, I, I, I did see dogs basically everywhere where at Weed Beach. They were not contained to the designated area. There were dogs off leash all over the park, uh, people right in the center area of the beach, you know, multiple people with multiple dogs standing and talking. Uh, on one occasion, I even saw a woman inside the playground with her large dog sitting next to her. Um, so we, uh, we we were certainly not successful. Also, the hours, people were there well, well beyond the posted hour. I saw people literally walk right by the sign that was put up later in the season clearly saying, go this way, and the hours end at one o'clock, and you know, I'd see people three, four o'clock in the off afternoon just go marching right by them and go in the opposite direction. So uh, my personal observation was there was a high level of uh, non-conformance with, you know, the established rules. But I don't know if other people were down there, again, got feedback or, you know, otherwise, you know, heard things. I could, I could agree with that. I, on numerous occasions, um, I did see people well after uh, the one o'clock mark that were there walking by the enormous sign that we all put together and put out there. And I think to to the staffs, you know, you know, we, we did as much as we could to follow up with trying to have better signage for people to understand where they were supposed to be. Really, there was no excuse, in my opinion. We had, as you entered, we had arrows, we had signage at the playground that said, the, the, you know, an arrow to where they're supposed to be. No dogs allowed here. Uh, we did, we did, we did a, an email blast. We've done a lot to do that, and um, in order for those those to understand where they were supposed to be on the site. Unfortunately, for those that followed the rules, this is where it really hurts because I do think they left it clean. I, on the occasions that I went there, I didn't see any bags left around on my, you know, watch. You know, so those that really did follow the rules, it's a shame. But that's that's so is life. That's what happens, right? Those that don't want to, you know, follow them hurts the ones that do. So any other thoughts or comments? Um, you know, we'll take this up again next fall in terms of whether or not we wish to, you know, renew the program. But I thought it was important to get any feedback, um, you know, observations people had, you know, 
while it was fresh in our minds. Tier, I don't know how much you got down there over the winter, whether you had any observations or not. Um, just because I had Mary, I didn't get down there this much this okay. winter. Okay. And uh, Susan, I mean, Lori, did you skip over five discussion on current and upcoming programming? Um, I did. Okay. So we'll go back. So we just we had a, a staff meeting last week and discussed our We Beach Fest and the adventure uh, event that was going to be happening in Stellitz Woods and of course the fireworks that are coming and the bicentennial uh, events and uh, you know got some feedback from the staff and. I think it's realistic to say that we need to publicly announce that we are going to um, reschedule the Weed Beach Fest and Bicentennial Bash. Um, it's possible as we see how everything unwinds that it won't be rescheduled, it will be canceled, but we, we're not ready to do that. We're ready to say let's postpone it right now, see if we can come up with a realistic date months past maybe continue in the summer or even the latest september um, and we're going to wait till the end of the month uh, to make the decision on the fireworks but today it's just not realistic that june 6th that there's going to be a large gathering in our parks and it may not be realistic as we watch it unwind that it may not be realistic for september either i don't think anybody really knows right now but we're going to hold fast we're going to keep on planning and doing our best um, until we have to pull the plug. Yeah, I think that makes sense, Pam. I think it's, it's, it's just much too soon to, to know, although I would hate to throw in the towel completely um, until we get a little clearer visibility. But I think June doesn't make sense because you really can't expect the sponsors to step up when we can't, even if we held it and if technically things are open, one thing we, we're not going to understand is how comfortable people are going to feel gathering in larger groups. So I think until we really have a sense of what getting back to normal looks and feels like and how quickly that happens, I don't know that you could really make the financial commitments both on, on getting people getting sponsors in and the financial commitments for vendors we need. I just don't I just don't see how we can do that. Sadly, but, I agree. Sadly, but you know, especially given that it was for the bicentennial is particularly disappointing. Other people have thoughts on that? One other thought that our staff came up with Val Muller at our, our front attendant. She suggested that maybe on the date of June 6th that the bicentennial bash and the fest were to happen, we do something special that day not certain what that is right now but we're we're entertaining the thoughts behind that to see if we can put something together whether it's virtually it's kind of like the ringing of the bells uh on that saturday right something that recognizes what was supposed to happen in a very positive way about especially about the 200th year so we are not done planning and the staff behind the scenes will try to come up with something um and we, maybe we can report on that next month. Jamie, has the 2020 uh, committee been meeting? Um, the actual committee has not been meeting, but my subcommittee that I have for the actual bash has been meeting. Okay. My understanding is all these subcommittees are meeting. We're just not meeting as a bicentennial committee. Okay. Okay. And they're honestly, they're very much looking towards us and um, what, well, and they want obviously Jamie's feelings as well, but very much looking towards us and happy to support whatever decision we determine. Okay. And I wanted to mention the adventure at Selix Woods is also postponed and they're very optimistic that they will postpone it to a couple months or three down the road 
but they can do that event anytime, even in the fall. So yeah. they're gun ho to make it happen. Yeah, well, let's hope so. That's such a uh, such an awesome event. Okay, thanks. Anything else on that, Pam, or any other comments? Not from me. Okay. Okay. All right. Anybody else on the commission? Or everybody's good. Well, perhaps I'm sorry. Let me let me say one more thing. Um, sure. you, we were we're touching on events, but we're not touching on programming. And I want to, um, you know, thank Jim and Jamie for doing the best they can with our spring events, our spring programming being canceled 100%. I mean, $43,000 we refunded to those that signed up for spring events, our spring program, I'm sorry. Um, and they've done their best to try to, A, communicate with the public the best they can, um, shout outs on social media, virtual programming. Um, Jamie and Jim, if you want to speak to that quickly about, um, you know, how, how some of the programs have gone. Um, yeah, we've seen varying results for different ones, but um, we offered uh, some virtual cooking classes with Chef Lisa and we got some really great feedback from some parents on that. and. Um, just nice messages about bringing the whole family together and things of that nature. So we were really excited to see that and um, like working moms not having, they're pretty, they're making dinner for the family. So that was really well received. Um, and then we had some, we do a lot of like free workouts and we've had a really good response on social media to that. And um, Jim created a whole virtual programming page on our website. And um, we have uh, three different types of things we're offering on there. The actual online classes that kind of replaced our spring programming. We're trying to offer any of our spring program that we can online. Um, we debuted a lot of those this week. So we'll see kind of how those, um, if they're popular or not. Um, and then we have like the pre-recorded sessions that a lot of our fitness instructors are doing that we're posting on social media. And then um, just kind of some fun, free activity ideas and things like that for families to do and whenever it's convenient for them and they want to entertain their kids. So we're trying. <laughs> and I, I spoke to a colleague in Indiana today who uh, just recently they've been shut down and we are so fortunate. Their almost entire department was laid off and her particular job now she's working out in the parks department planting and digging and doing things that she's never done before um, just to keep her job she uh, asked the selectmen if they could do some virtual programming since all their spring classes were canceled and they said no to it so we are very fortunate to have the flexibility and the creativity to try to continue to give our residents and their kids something to do so thank you jim and jamie thank you very much Hey, Pam, can you just repeat? I, I want to make sure that I got it. The amount that was refunded? $43,000 at one point. Jim, you may want to up that, or is that about right, $43,000? Yeah, that, that's, that, that's definitely right on. I mean, it's it's going to end up being a little bit more. Uh, we were getting refund requests um, early on when this all this was going on back in the middle of march and and you know get to the point where we knew we weren't going to be able to run programs uh the way we could and um i think for the spring programs it was it's going to end up being around between 45 and 50 thousand that were those have already been processed i think people should have already get them back on their credit cards and then you know we'll start we're gonna have to start looking at the summer um and the weeks ahead to see where we are with that but that's <laughs> That's to be determined right now. Pam, have you heard anything from Darian Junior Sailing? Yes, I heard back from John Whipple. And again, they're in the same boat we are, uh, no pun intended. And uh, they are signing up. They had a, actually a really busy uh, registration period until March hit. And of, of course, that became really slow. So they are optimistic. They want to be optimistic for the end of June, but they don't know. They, they're, they're planning like it's going to happen. He is going to submit the application for us and the insurance. And, um, you know, and perhaps by then, maybe in mid-May, I know there's talks 
from some governors of trying to plan on what opening up will look like. Yes. Um, and so at that point, they may have a better feeling of how they continued the program with social distancing. Uh, so they're in the waiting game just like we are. Okay, but they they intend to apply and get the permits and everything in place with us, you know, in anticipation that they can go forward. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, so we set on the um, current addressing the current situation, both from a programming and park standpoint. Yes, everybody set on that. And then also, um, I think that wraps up the discussion on the dogs at Weed Beach for now, and then we'll take that up again in the fall. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is the discussion of the use uh, by the freight family of the dock over at Pear Tree. Uh, you all remember back in August, uh, we had a request to uh, really update an agreement that had put in, been put in place a number of years before and uh, fallen off the radar of the commission. And at that time, we did make an agreement for the freights to uh, use the Pear Tree Point side, which is the very shallow side of the public boat ramp, to uh, dock two of their skiffs that they use to access their fishing boats. And we agreed to allow that through April 30th, which is coming up, at which time we would revisit it. Um, I don't know if any members of the freight family are on the phone. Yes, no. Sounds like no. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yes, Roger Free Jr. How are you doing? Good, Roger. How are you? Thank you for joining. Good. Uh, thank you for having me. You're most welcome. Um, so we did, um, you know, want to revisit this again. Um, because the agreement is, as I just mentioned, we had agreed through April. The original agreement back dating back probably eight or 10 years uh, was supposed to be for the winter only. And we did renew it uh, through April 30th this year. I think part of the thinking is we did not know at that point whether uh, what would be happening with the construction of the boat ramp and such, which certainly that will not be happening uh, this summer based on on where, where we are at this moment. So, um, is it a, a correct expectation that the family would like to continue to use the dock? Well, very much so, if possible. Okay. Okay. And as I recall, um, there, as you described it to us back in August, there were really no viable alternatives for you. Uh, the way the harbor is filling in, no. Um, well, we used to keep our skiffs over on the. Uh, by the sidewalk by the boat club at low tide, there's just so little room now that boats are having trouble navigating by us. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, now, I did notice on a couple, since like most town residents, I'm taking lots of long walks these days. A couple times I did notice the larger of the two skiffs on the other side of the dock. Now, I do realize it's winter and there's no boats and nobody using them. So, probably not a particular issue this time of year, but I you know, did want to reinforce if we agree this, that you know, the boats do need to say, uh, stay on the pear tree side. Absolutely, uh, we did that to about last week and they are back on the pear tree side. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to open this up to the commissioners for questions and comments. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Freight or comments? No, no concerns. Okay, um, well, Pam and I uh, did realize that when we put the agenda together, and this was my, my miss, we did put um, to discuss it this evening, but we've neglected to put a vote on it. Um, so I think what we would have to do then is schedule a separate quick meeting between now and the end of April to actually take a vote um to extend this i think the commission should decide or maybe we can discuss for a few minutes if we want to you know keep looking at this every six months or or once a year um any thoughts or comments from the commission on that i would think once a year would be sufficient 
Okay, thanks, Mary Louise. Um, is it still a request for a year? I think in the past it used to only be during the summer uh, months, and now this has been a new request for the year. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Susan, you've been around a long time. You know more history than I do. Well, the history was that we would only allow it till April, from November to April. We never did the summer because we felt that the residents needed that area to launch their boats, to, you know, and there's other, you know, there's more traffic. And so as a commission, we allowed it, it as an exception. Um, and we allowed it because we were given, I mean, I know, I think that some of the conditions changed in the harbor, it sounds like. But the idea was that Mr. Freight, I think senior father, um, had me to have a boat that he could get in and out of comfortably because of his disability. That was the original, uh, what I remember. I mean, I've been on the commission um, as the intent. So I think it changed, it sounds like, because I missed that last meeting. So I, I apologize. So I don't know all of the background, but it sounded like things, conditions changed. And that was the intent originally. But, you know, obviously, it sounds like new facts have been brought to light. But I do have a concern as uh, a commissioner about that dock, only because it's the only dock that the whole town is using. It's the only public dock. And I think that people do like to, when they bring their boats in and do all this stuff, you know, moving around, having that space to the right of the actual ramp is where sometimes people like to tie up and get what they need to do or whatever. And I feel like by letting this go on in the summer months during our peak voting season hard for our residents to use this you know? so I just want to speak from that okay thank you Susan um others no no other um questions or comments Okay, so Mary Louise, you thought one year. I mean, the discussion we had back in August, it, it was really that the agreement had been, as Susan says, many years ago for the winters only, but uh, the, the family started using it year round and the commission really, frankly, just lost sight of it for a number, a number of years until um, it was brought to our attention last summer. And that's when we took it up in August. Um, you know, Jamie Stevenson asked us to you know, consider continuing the year-round arrangement given given the lack of alternatives for them to get to their commercial vessel. So I believe that, you know, that is that is certainly going to, there is the request from the family. So we'll need to take that up and vote on whether we want to continue it. And I think Mary Louise is suggesting, and I'm not hearing objection, that we would make this, you know, an annual discussion. And that would also, as we continue to pursue any projects with Pear Tree, we will have to, you know, keep keep that in mind as we go forward. I just want to just interject for a second. I mean, Roger, you're online. Is there any other yeah. I mean, other place that we can like find? I mean, I, I wasn't at that first meeting. I apologize again. But are there other places that we could have you store your gifts at or you know during the summer at least for those few months that are our peak usage times? Ah, uh, so, well, like I, I don't said, mean to we'll keep them. Excuse me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was saying where we used to keep them was as you were walking into the Darien Boat Club, uh, where the sidewalk is down to the right. Uh, since the docks have been reworked a few times, moved around, extended, I don't know what you want to call it, there's less and less room over there. So where our boats are at low tide is directly in the path of, say, 30 boats that are trying to get out at times. Um, so what originally happened was the harbor master came and gave us a complaint. So we talked to him about it and he said, if you could keep it on the inside of that dock and out of everybody's way, um, he thinks things would be better. And he consulted with the Marine police and they agreed upon that kind of as a, you know, uh, behind closed doors meeting, I guess you'd call it. And we never had any problem with that until someone had a complaint. Uh, last summer when I left the boat on the end of the dock and sit on the inside. So I really have no other idea of where we could possibly keep the boats in the cellar. 
Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question, Susan? Yeah, it does. I'm just still concerned about access to yep. all the residents. Yep. I mean, what we might want to think about as an alternative I think we is... also had... A, oh, just going back real quick. I think, vaguely remember that we did say something about limiting, I think, how many boats could be there. I think we had said one at some point. It was never two, I don't think. Um, I'll have to go back and look at it again when we have our vote. But I remember vaguely that we did so that there wasn't two boats, so that there was no place for another boat to sit over there. It was, I think, one boat on I'll have to look. I'll go back and look. Later. Okay. Um, and and Roger, can you be... can you tell us why you need to have two? Uh, because we have two commercial vessels, whereas if one boat is out, the skiff is out on the mooring, so we cannot access the second boat. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We use those skiffs to get to our boats, and then we leave the skiffs on the moorings as the boats are out working. And what are the hours the, the skiffs are generally off the dock and out on the moorings? And, and how many days uh, a week? Usually from about 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m. to 2 to 3 p.m., six days a week, but both boats aren't always out. One of the boats yes, is designed to lobster, and now it's, you know, lobstering is a side business at best. I just looked up an email, and it said that we allowed one smaller boat to be tied to the south side of the pear tree dock. That was the permission. Right, right. But when we had the meeting in August, we applied for both boats. That was our request. I, I think we sent a, a letter to you guys, and then we discussed it. Okay, that's correct. Um, I think the letter was dated August 9th, if I remember right. Yeah, yes. the letter, too, that we have is dated August 27th back to you requesting the insurance, and it does say the Parks and Recreation Commission voted to allow your two skiff boats used in conjunction with your com commercial fishing operation to tie up with the town stock. Right. Uh, one as, far, as far as I know from that point on, I haven't heard any complaints from anybody. Okay, I don't believe we've received any, correct, Pam? No, no complaints. Okay. Yeah, uh, one, one thing we could would think about is this time around to extend it from April 30th into the fall and then thereafter go to more of a one-year renewal because that would allow us to discuss and act on it at the end of the summer effectively when we would most likely to be getting any feedback from the community um, because largely the I think the boat ramp is used by the public probably up till about mid-October and then at that point most people pull their boat so uh, that would be one thing to think about would be to do it just this year uh, just to extend it out until the fall and then get it on a cycle where it's considered at the end of the summer. So um, I think that's something to think about. So I think what we'll have to do um, because um, I just didn't set this agenda up properly is to schedule a quick uh, meeting. We can do it by this go to meeting again. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes of the commission. Um, to take a vote on this so that we can keep this, um, you know, I would like to keep it within the, you know, April 30th time frame so that, you know, we do keep keep the rigor around keeping an eye on, on this uh, special accommodation. Okay. So anybody have any more questions or comments on this um, while we have uh, Mr. Freight on the phone? No? Okay. All right, I think we're good for this evening and uh, I'll work with Pam to get that scheduled before April 30th. Okay, and Roger, we'll, we'll let you know when we uh, schedule that meeting. Thank you very much, I appreciate You're your time. You're most welcome. Okay, thank you for joining right. us tonight. All right, thank you, have a nice evening, bye. Thank you, okay. Okay, uh, now we are on to the paddle hut rules. Uh, Pam sent out a version with the original packet, but we did have some additional feedback. So I think we're gonna have to discuss um, the additional comments. She did send a, another version out. Uh, what time was it, four or five this afternoon, Pam? <laughs> yes. Yep, okay, and I know Amy, you had some comments, but I don't know if your comments are in the version that came in late this afternoon or not. 
Yeah, my comments are on the version that came at 5.30 tonight. Um, there are a bunch of edits. Uh, my, kind, my comments are not um, about content so much, but there are quite a few edits. So I'm not sure how you want to handle the edits. Do you want to talk about content first? Should we go through the edits quickly? How do you want to deal with this? Um, well, in terms of edits, are you talking about things like you added a comma or... Yeah, there's there are lots of uh, there are lots of issues. Okay, okay, because I think that would be difficult to go through that as opposed to maybe we just talk about the content, make sure we're in agreement once and for all on the content, and then people read them and then get a clean copy, and then we vote on it at our next at our next meeting. I think might be easier than trying to go through all of this the yeah. detail. And Jamie Jamie, if you can reach out to me um, tomorrow and we can go through and make the if that's should I work with Jamie on that? Um, if, is Jamie the keeper of the master version or is Pam? I, I've worked on it all day today. So and, and Amy, the, the version that I worked on is the version that was cleaned up by you. So the only only areas that changed were the highlighted areas. That's it. Otherwise, it's the same document. Yeah, so they're, they're all. Yeah, well, we were going to edit it after the last meeting, and that didn't get done. So um, there are there are a bunch of things. I'm happy to work with you on it. I'm happy to work on it by myself and send send it to you. But there, there are some edits that need to get done. Right. So you and I can talk tomorrow. We can, we can do that. Because as long as it's not content, everything in here now is what Jim and I That's actually worked on today. You're at it. Yeah. So just let me know. Shoot me an email. Let me know when you're available tomorrow. Okay. okay. Thanks. All right. So in terms of content, the one thing I... I'm sorry? Jamie's off the hook. Okay. Uh, the, the one addition that I had asked to be added is that we had wanted to have a definition of what a paddle party was. Um, and language was added today that says a paddle party is defined as a rental of a minimum of three courts for a minimum of two hours for the purposes of playing paddle tennis. Okay, so that we just wanted to make that really clear that you know right. what the definition of the paddle is. And this is, the language is consistent with what we discussed and what is represented in the minutes of our last meeting, but, but it didn't find its way into the version that was circulated earlier. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, that's because nothing, we didn't get, we just didn't do an edit. Okay. Unfortunately. Okay. Okay, so Pam, any other highlights Slip. you want to, you want to, um, the ads that were, were put in today, just to highlight those things? Yeah, I, I think, in my opinion, it, there was some confusion about when the paddle party rentals uh, what season they are versus when you want to just have an, uh, a reunion or a gathering or when the facility is not based on paddle tennis. And so I feel that, you know, Jim and I went back till 530 this, tonight just saying, okay, does this make sense? Paddle hut rentals that are general have nothing to do with paddle tennis per se. It's just the facility being rented is during spring and summer only. Okay. And then we repeated it in the next, uh, the next column there is paddle party rentals fall and winter only because that's strictly to do with paddle tennis playing on the courts. And so I, I personally feel it's clarified better. Okay. And then of course, Susan helped out with the cancellations. We kind of cleaned up that area. Um, and that reads, it reads a little cleaner on the cancellation area. And that's all that I had to add. Okay. Well, perhaps if we're going to uh, schedule another quick meeting before the end of the month, maybe if Amy, you could get your final cleanups in, we could knock two of those things off and just be done with this. Yeah, I agree. And then we can okay. move on to the next addendum, right? Right, because there's multiple. We have a lot more addendums to tackle, and and the, the whole document itself. So, agreed. Um, yep. 
we wanted to kind of tackle this to have it ready for paddle season and didn't quite get there. So um, if we could do that, so um, if you could work on that, yeah, I mean, well, in short order, because we do need to have the special meeting before the end of April. Yes. Okay, and then we'll get it out, and yeah, then we'll just no, have it. and I can chat tomorrow. I'm just gonna... Okay, good. And then we'll just have a quick meeting before the end of the month, and hopefully that works for everybody. Okay, since none of us can go anywhere anyway. So anyway. Okay. Okay. Um, next on the uh, agenda is the discussion on the basketball half court um, in the space at Cherry Lawn. Pam, I wanted you to bring everybody up to deep date with your meeting with the arborist. Right, I did not meet with him, but we oh, okay. discussed by way of email. He went out on his own, he took a look at the and the trees. Oh. Okay. And in his opinion, the trees would be compromised in the long run if they were cut and pavement was to be placed on top of them. So I didn't get any farther than that. And then of course, all this happened. Okay. So I know at this point that capital improvement projects are on hold. And we did have a couple estimates, one being 15,000, the other being 12,000 to have that court be uh, done over in its current foot footmark, footprint, whatever I'm trying to say. Footprint. Footprint, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, but I had Mike kind of take a look at it, our tree warden, and he, you know, he doesn't feel fully confident that those trees wouldn't be affected by them being cut into and removed out of that asphalt. And to just to, to refresh my memory, to resurface the court, in the existing location to make it even and safe for play would require some removal of root these trees roots and that is what could then compromise those trees correct okay according to the vendor no according to the tree warden yes okay and i see mary louise's face you oh, you're on mute After the uh, the last meeting, I went over, and actually there are three trees. It's not just two. Two of them are growing together, but they're huge, gorgeous trees, and um, they have substantial roots that are encroaching onto the surface of that court, and also some large branches that spread out uh, a considerable distance, which would make it difficult if you're playing basketball, I think. You'd be hitting the branches. So. Okay. I don't know. I think it's I think it's problematic to use that space. This is a uh, Mike, and I guess I would just request. Uh, so Pam, to your point, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is on hold or if it's not on hold, but if it's if we're doing if we're if we're in a position where we're looking at doing this, when and if that's appropriate. I'd like to have the opportunity just to satisfy myself, since I'm the one who kind of kind of pushed for it last meet, our last meeting. Maybe to go out and visit it with the arborist and have him just kind of talk me through it. Maybe we can get the arborist along with the guy you were planning on doing the uh, black topping, and uh, just have another look. You know, I, I just just so I could say to myself, just so I could satisfy myself that yep, I I, I agree with the recommendation and I'm good with True. it. True, and but I, in the meantime, I'll send all of you. From Mike Cotta, that email must not have um, been sent and forwarded to all of you, and I'll and I'll certainly do that. I, I think it may have been just a few weeks before all this happened. Um, so, I, in the meantime, Mike, I have. Yeah, I, I actually drove over this afternoon with the thought that maybe I can sneak in and kind of just park for a few minutes and run over and take a look. But the, you guys did a great job putting the barricades up, so I figured. I didn't. I didn't want to have to give you guys a call to bail me out of jail. So uh, <laughs> hop in the fence. Anyway, I did try. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's just the trick right now. If you want to go over and visualize and see these things, um, 
it's difficult, you know, it's difficult to do, although if we could probably park in Amy's driveway uh, with prior, with prior arrangements, Mike, you might have been able to have done that. I was just going to park. You can park in my driveway if you want. Thank you for okay. that. But, but I, my, I, I'm I'll, I'll, I'll try to come over with, uh, with somebody from, from uh, Pam's team at some point, so. Uh. Sure. Okay. Um, but but my sense in my conversations with Jamie is that given given the vast unknown of the economic impact of the pandemic, that in finalizing the budget for the fiscal year, which begins July first, basically anything that is non-essential probably is is going to be cut. Um, it doesn't mean that later on. They may not find ways to fund certain things or whatever, but I, my clear sense is that there are just too many unknowns right now not to take the most fiscally conservative approach possible. So my expectation is that the, uh, the court would not get funded for this next fiscal year. So probably is not something we have to decide on right now as we had originally anticipated but at least we have some of this information and uh, you know, when we can get access to the parks. I know we had all talked about doing a spring walk around of the parks we didn't get to. And again, um, that, that clearly will be on hold until we know when we can all you know, safely gather again together. But, but, and we could also try to get over there for a visit and take a look through. But um, we did have the information from the Arborist and I thought it was important just to make sure that we discussed it as a group and got, got the information out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any other questions or comments on that? Nope, okay. Um, then Pam, your report. Okay, let's see. I don't know that there, let me go over some of the, so as you said, just to reiterate, uh, we you know, are on hold with many of the projects that uh, we had been chugging along with, uh, Pear Tree being one of them is on hold until further notice. Uh, the Weed Beach Meadow and Trail project um, had been on hold, but um, is is on hold in even dealing with the budget part of that. Uh, the concession stand um, final lease was, you know, went through with Kate and Jamie and mine, but again, we don't know where we're going. We're just trying to uh, continue moving along as if we're going to be opening. Um, Security guards, we've been had some discussions about how we're going to handle that. And I think it's appropriate time to have these discussions because we have to have some sort of plan, whether that plan gets implemented early May, late May, or early June, late June, we don't know. So we, we will be having some more discussions and hopefully I can share more of that with you at the next time we meet. The, the gardens at Cherry Lawn do, did remain open after having the possibility of closing it down due to the fact that we were worried about gardeners safety uh, in terms of sharing tools um, but we put up the proper signage saying not to share tools and to bring your own tools and uh, to garden at your own risk so we're glad that we're able to do that but we're you know we're all very concerned about everybody and their safety um, and I talked about the COVID-19 steps and that the final step we're at right now is whether you agree with it or you don't. And I know that there's some heavy debate on social media about park access um, and uh, versus having no access at all. And I know some of our neighboring towns, Fairfield, Greenwich, um, have closed completely. And there's also a feeling of of trying very hard to give people the opportunity to follow the rules to use the spaces that we have as well. That's the other, that's the flip side of the coin. And uh, even a, our National Parks and Recreation Association re recently put out um, a notice uh, pleading with people how important it is to have, have our parks open, help us keep our parks open. But in order to do that, we have to abide by the following things. And, so we've had talks about park monitors. If we don't have the staff to monitor what people are doing, to gently remind people to social distance and not gather. 
um, it's possible that we'll look to hire someone to, to circulate. Um, don't have this is none of this is confirmed right now. It's just talking about the possibilities. So that's something that you might hear about. Um, our maintenance crew is split into two teams. So our team A comes in one week and works the full week while team B stays home. Following week, team B comes in and team A stays home. So we are on, one team is three gentlemen, the other team is four. And uh, I do a daily check-in with them. And uh, they, they also keep an eye on the parks as well. Give me a little feedback about whether or not uh, they see any activity out there. But the police are at the parks. A monitoring activity right now too. Uh, and as we mentioned, recreationally and event-wise, we are on hold, um, planning on hold. And I don't think there's anything else um, other than looking ahead. So as we look ahead, we'll continue to monitor what this COVID-19 outbreak is doing and try to determine when we can get back to some normalcy. And certainly, I'm following our selectman, selectman's lead and she's following the governor's lead. That's as far as I know right now uh, about the talks. If anything changes, we'll be hearing about it, I'm sure. That's it. Okay, thanks, Pam. Thanks, Pam. Any questions for Pam? Um, well, in terms of chairman's report, there, there really is not enough, a lot to report in the sense, obviously, there have not really been any town meetings or any, or any activity. Um, I can only say that, you know, going through the last, you know, month or so as, you know, we've had to take steps um, with regard to the parks and activities. Uh, Jamie has been in direct communication on um, a number of times. I know it's her great wish to keep our parks as accessible to people as possible. Um, you know, she understands the importance of, of the town residents having the open space to use when we're all feeling so restricted and confined. Um, but she is is more than willing to take the hard line if we don't see people feeling f following the rules and putting other people at, at risk. So, um, you know, in our conversations and our discussions, um, when I'm out and observing things, I share that with her. She gets input from many town residents. And um, she has and is willing to make the hard decisions if that what if that's what it, it takes. But she has absolutely been, you know, reaching out and in communication, you know, with myself and you know, with the input of, of Pam and the staff to try to make the best decisions possible. Um, and I think that's as much as we we can ask, you know, in terms of her her leadership. Now she's in a tough position because, you know, it's a, you know every decision is going to make somebody unhappy, you know, no matter what no matter what she does. So. Um, she certainly has my support in making the decisions, and I can only implore the town residents with regard to the parks to please, please follow our established park rules, to follow the, you know, the rules that have been set out, you know, by our leadership in town and the governor uh, with regard to social distancing, uh, no small groups, use of picnic areas, um, so that people can make the best of the circumstances that we have right now um but but a few people can and will spoil it for the rest of us so that message has to get out there and if if we don't find we can keep them open then, then we're going to have to take the hard line and i know jamie will do that so you know i know we're being recorded um probably scanning the press that's all i can say is it really takes every single person to abide by the rules and be respectful of of their neighbors and the town residents, or it's going to make it that much harder for the rest of us. So, and that would be it. That would be a shame. So, that's really what I've got to say on that topic. So, other than that, there's really not too much. We're very much in a holding pattern. Um, you know, reflecting back on going into uh, the fiscal year, and we had so many projects going on, and felt like we could barely keep up with all of the activity. And you know, it's certainly disappointing to see everything grinding to a halt right now, but. We'll just have to wait it out and, and look forward to, you know, going back to uh, finding ways to make our parks better for everybody. So that's really it for now. Um, anybody have any new business they would like to bring up and have a motion to discuss? 
Yeah, this is Mike. Um, if I can, I guess I, I I think I need to clarify where we are with the Pear Tree Beach project. So um, you guys can hear me, right? So, uh, yep. so, for, so first off, just referring back to Pam's um, update um, and the reference in Pam's status that the Pear Tree Beach project had been on hold. And um, so just to clarify, um, and up until today, um, the Patriot Beach project hadn't been on hold. Um, you know, we uh, we were at a place where um, the design team, Neil Houck and Dan Biggs and Weston Sampson, along with input from Redness and Mead and Race, were moving forward um, with information that they had provided to Deep in Hartford to get a, a reading from Deep based upon the recommendations to um, that were out there in terms of raising, uh, elevating the parking lot. Um, um, that, that's been essentially the kind of center of our attention for probably the last couple of months. Uh, the design team had brought that to a stage where um, they had essentially drafted a plan um, that indicated um, in, in a fair level of detail how to raise that parking lot uh, to essentially avoid um, the type of flooding that we're seeing under various different tide situations and storm situations and the combination of both. And I would refer folks back to meeting back a couple of months ago where we had um, as guests, uh, Devin Santa and uh, Craig Flaherty as well. So. So uh, just to clarify that, that project had been moving along up until today. Um, today, um, Lori and I have received uh, a correspondence from Jamie. And uh, I'll just read a bit of that correspondence that we received. And what Jamie has essentially asked us uh, to do and is to relay to the Parks and Recs Commission, uh, no, this is a quote, uh, in quotes, to relay to the Parks and Recs um, Commission my request to put this project on hold until next year, until after we have a clear view of the economic impacts of the COVID-19 crisis on our local economy. Um, and then uh, just kind of you know further from that note, Jamie goes on to say, um, taking a year to get clarity on the stability of our local economy will provide valuable input for the project going forward. So um, essentially, um, Jamie is very specifically asking the commission to consider her recommendation. She's not telling us to put the project on hold, but she's asking her us to consider her recommendation to put the project on hold, given the circumstances and the current economic conditions that prevail. So before I, I, I go on any further, I would just ask you, Lori, if I if you feel I've kind of characterized that, you know, accurately. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good synopsis of what she put forward uh, to us late this afternoon. Yeah. So so with that, um, you know, I, I think the commission um, just a you know, we need to be aware of that. And, um, you know, we do have a building committee that has been operating and, you know, my intention, unless I, I have an objection from anybody here, is to communicate <laughs> this information now to the building committee as well as to the design team and indicate that, you know, as of today, and that hasn't been the case up until now, but as of today, we will essentially, you know, uh, essentially comply with Jamie's request on a Jamie's request here and um, essentially put the project on on hold. So um, that I guess that is that. And you know, back to Lori's comments, no surprise, you know, there's a lot of tough decisions that are being made. Um, you know, my sense is that, you know, this project had been brought to, I would say kind of a natural point at which, you know, we've got a tremendous amount of design work that's been done on both, you know, structures and on the parking lot. I think one, you know, question that remains here, and you know, I'll do some follow-up offline unless somebody wants to weigh in on it, is that we did get an indication from Dan Biggs today. There had been a request out to Deep for meet for a meeting or at least a, kind of a review of the design 
information that the design team had prepared on the parking lot, elevating the parking lot. Um, that request had been out to deep for, I would say, well over a month. And we, uh, Dan Biggs uh, sent in a note today indicating that we finally did get an, in, uh, an indication from deep that they will uh, uh, convene a meeting next week amongst their own team uh, without any of us or the, our design team to take a look at the information that's been provided. So I would just suggest it's maybe a nice thing to have them at least kind of weigh in on that information, you know, before we kind of, you know, button things down, you know, in anticipation of having, you know, the project kind of reemerge at some point. So, um, so that's all I, I have. If anybody has any comments or input that they'd like to pass along that I in turn could share with the committee, you know, please, please do. Uh, but my intent would be to uh, update the committee on this update uh, now that, you know, the commission's been updated on it. Questions or comments? So I, I do think, Mike, if, if if Deep is going to have that meeting, it certainly will be interesting to get that information back um, because that is such a um, integral part of the decision-making process going forward. So I think you know before we go on any kind of pause, it, it would it would certainly be great to have that information, and then it'd be good things that people even if we're not actively meeting, whatever can be thinking about and, you know, have in our heads, you know, you know, when we get to the point where we can comfortably decide uh, that we want to, you know, start moving forward with uh, the decision-making process again. Again, the, the challenge right now is just nobody, nobody knows how this will play out, how quickly, you know, the circumstances may change and what, you know, when we get back to whatever normal, normal is and it's just there, there's too many question marks right now certainly in the banking industry we're dealing with that every minute of every day and uh, we, we just don't know right now yeah and, and so I, you know as you say uh, I, I agree you know if we can get deep to weigh in that'd be helpful and just once again you guys don't have the benefit of having Jamie's note in front of you but I mean Jamie essentially is asking us to put it on hold until next year so we're not suggesting you know if there were clarity that at least Jamie's not suggesting that if there's clarity in July or August or, you know, to kind of start the project up then, I think she's very specifically, right. you know, asking us to put it on hold for, uh, for the, for a year um, or into next year, certainly. And I think that's with an eye towards kind of the economic considerations here that this is a project that, you know, uh, this has some bearing on funding and there are other bigger fish to fry, I think under the circumstances. So, uh, so anyway, that's, that's the update. And uh... I wanted to just make a quick comment. Um, we worked on Weed Beach. We were kind of faced with you know, the 2008 financial crisis or recession, or whatever you might call it. And we were put on hold, too, after do doing all this work. And we actually went forward with the playground, and things were in play. So you know, eventually, as you know, it was released, and we were able to spend the funds to do the project. So I just want people to keep in mind that this work doesn't have to be wasted. I mean, there could, you know, you know, we've faced other financial situations in the past that have held projects that did go forward. So I think it's good to kind of keep, if we are getting new information, to keep that coming in and to really educate ourselves, take the time to take, you know, to, to dive deep into this. So, yeah, it's just a couple of things. And I think that's, that's a, that's, that's really great insight, Susan. In fact, I, you know, it'll just, Given where we are over the last couple of weeks, I've had a number of conversations with Neil Houck, and you know, as you're aware, you know, Neil was the architect on on Weed, and I asked him, you know, what what was his recollection? Like, how did that happen? Where, and essentially, it's as you described, you know, things were moving along, and all of a sudden, he was told to stop, and there was a hiatus, and then you got a call one day that the project had been, you know, restarted. So, to your point, I think that's that's uh, that, that's it's good insight to share. That. Yeah, good insight we to actually share. did a two thousand person uh, petition to get uh, Dave Campbell to release the money. I don't know if you know that. Um, well, so there was a lot more at play, but anyway, that was a yeah. long time ago. Different yeah, the other thing that I would just ask, maybe, and you know, Pam, we can work offline on this. Is 
just to kind of get some confirmation, you know, there's a lot of information that's been kind of developed around the project. Um, and this may be true of many projects like this, but I think, you know, as we all know, tons of information uh, that came out of the design uh, kind of exercise. So I think if I could just ask you to give some thought and maybe I'm not sure who you need to chat with, but um, to just maybe give the building committee some guidance as to, you know, um, what we need to do to just button that down and make sure that it's kind of memorialized in the right way. It's on the website. Um, we've got lots of different paper documents floating around, but we want to make sure that when it does start up again, um, you know, all that information is readily, easily accessible, maybe easily indexed. So uh, a tremendous amount of you know work went into that, and we want to make sure that that investment is not, uh, you know, it's kind of fully realizable. Um, so I just put that out there again, and we can, we can do some follow up on that. Um, but I'd ask you to maybe just give some thought to that, or just follow up with whoever you feel you need to, to get some clarity for us on it. Absolutely. We'll do that for you. That's it for me. Yeah, Mike, the only thing we might want to think about, although the project is pausing, is, is it occurs to me that we never did hear back from the police commission. And even if we were to be pausing for this full year, it I think it would be nice to reiterate to them that we would like them to press ahead at least with what their plan might be. They were talking about a you know, strategic plan and really assessing what marine policing might look like um, in the future and what their needs would be, but it might be worthwhile to encourage them to continue with that. So at the point we are able to move forward again, we aren't waiting for them because that, that has been a hang up over the last few months. It was a major piece of information that we really didn't have to work with in terms of what their request might be and how we might consider that. Um, I would hate to waste this pause and then get to the point where we were able to get moving again and they also went on pause and really weren't nowhere because in theory it shouldn't hold them up from strategically thinking about what their needs are going to be over the next 10 years, which is what they're talking about. So I think we should think about getting that message back to them that this doesn't mean they should not continue with that process. I'm checking the minutes of, of the last few meetings. It doesn't really look like they've, yeah, um, there hasn't been anything on the agenda about it that I've seen. Yeah, I, I agree, and, uh, and maybe I'll, I'll take your guidance in terms of, uh, you know, how you want to kind of register that with, okay, with the police commission. Okay. I just, I just wanted to add, uh, Mike, while this is on pause, uh, thank you so much. And, and please convey our thanks to the, to the building committee uh, and also to Pam. Just tremendous amount of time you guys have put into this. And um, so I, I, we really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. It's you know, very, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Very small thing to say for the amount of work that you guys have done. Yeah, look, I, I my just, comment is just very small compared to what, what you guys have done. No, I mean, it's appreciated. And, and look, I, you know, we're all big people here and, um, you know, the world has changed and it would be kind of silly for us to make believe that things were as they were, <laughs> you know, back, back a couple of months ago. And, uh, you know, the things that we need to consider now were not even on our radar before. So, yeah, a lot of work's been done. I think, you know, we're all appreciative and we're appreciative of the opportunity to have done it as well. Um, and, um, but, you know, it goes with the territory. So, you know, things happen, you gotta re respond to it. And, uh, and you know, I, I, you know, back to the point we made, uh, I, that was made earlier in terms of, you know, the burden that's on Jamie Stevenson, um, these are tough decisions. And, uh, you know, it's not easy to think about kind of putting something like this on hold when there's a certain amount of momentum and work that's been done, but once again, we're all big people and it goes with the territory and uh, that's what makes this town an amazing town, you know, so uh, hard decisions get made, good things come of them and, um, you know, that's, that is, it is what it is. So that's kind of my editorial comment on, on, on this whole thing. So there you go. But thank you, Amy. Okay, thanks. That was good, good, good discussion. Um, any other items before we uh, wrap up for the evening? No? 
I think this was reasonably successful, other than that I'm frustrated that I, I can't totally see everybody. Time. Say that again, Amy. I thought we were actually going to discuss, um, I, I, I think it was on our agenda to discuss uh, uh, with Jim the uh, use of pesticides, et cetera, in the follow-up of, of our last discussion. I don't know if that, I mean, people are not going to be on the field so much for spring sports, et cetera. I don't know how um, this has all been derailed or postponed or what, but I, I did think we were going to follow up from last meetings on this meeting and it wasn't on the agenda. So I just wanted to know where that was. Pam, do you, do you have any? Well, with the, with all that's happened in the last four weeks, number one is driving that. And we had a very large agenda as it was. Um, we didn't feel that it was, it was time to put that on the agenda for this month. Uh, next month, perhaps. Uh, you know that there, we did get a response back from Jim and right, Jim Flynn in writing as to for his practices, so we can bring that up. He will he won't be visiting. Um, certainly, we won't be visiting either. We'll be doing these virtual meetings, but uh, and we were also talking about having some ex experts on both sides of the debate on um, pesticides and um, taking care of the fields in, in various ways um, to speak to educate the commission and myself and everybody more about what options are out there. I did have a long conversation with Greenwich, their park maintainer, and they are 100% um, organic. It has not been an easy feat. They've been at it for a very long time. It's very expensive and a lot of man work. So it was a very interesting com conversation that at another time I'd like to share with you further. But I think between Lori and I, when we looked at the issues that we had on the agenda already, we thought that that was it was better at a, at a later time. Sure. I guess what I what I really want to ask is, so are we just proceeding with business as usual with his his cycle? Because now we're you know we're going to head into May, and he's probably going to start uh, if he hasn't already. He probably has already using whatever he's been using, right? He only sprays once a year, that's in June. So that's the only time that he sprays at the athletic He sprays fields. in June. He doesn't, he does okay. not use any pesticides. So we've got no any of them. Yes. Okay, thanks, yeah. that's good to know. I did notice in one of the emails that came out, I think just this week from the NPRA, there's an article um, specifically about that if you, if you get those distributions. On the NRPA? NRPA, NPRA, NRPA, yes. It was in an email just yeah, the national. yeah just this mm -hmm. week there was an article um, specifically on this, Pam. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, I get a lot of them, but I, I, I will look at that okay. email that came in. Okay. And they did an article, uh, or there was an article about that I flagged, flagged to read. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'd like to see that too. Um, okay, I'll um, look for it in my uh, park email and then shoot it out. Thanks. So I literally think it was in the last 20, well, maybe in 20, 48, 72 hours. It, it it's an important out. discussion. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It was Anything about else? Seattle. I'll send it to you guys. I have it. It's sent yesterday. Okay. It was it. yesterday. I'll, I'll forward it to the commission. Sorry. We've been talking about it's like kind of like Groundhog Day. When every, every day is just... You, get up and shuffle through your day and anyway <laughs> really something so okay anything else anyone no okay well as I said I think this went reasonably well other than my frustration that I can't see everybody I'm not sure why I can I get I just seem to have a maximum of six tiles so. And it's been shifting during the meeting of which six people I see. But other than that, I think this worked reasonably well. So it was a good effort. And I'm really glad we were all able to uh, get together and, and see each other, so to speak, and uh, keep in touch. So I think we just all have to have hope that uh, things turn around and 
we're out enjoying the outdoors in our beautiful parks um, by this summer, I think is the best we can hope for at this point. Stay optimistic and stay, stay safe, everybody. Yep, absolutely. So I need a um, motion to adjourn. I move. That was Mary Louise. Um, I guess, do you have to roll call this one, Jamie? I think you do. We need a second. Yeah, I get a second. I, I second, Mike. Okay, all yeah. right, you got to roll call it, girl. All right. Lori, do you approve? I do. Sarah? Yes. Susan? Yes. Amy? Yes. Pierre? Yes. Unanimous. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> All right, everybody. And there's a top left button. You hit leave meeting, and um, that'll be that. Otherwise, we'll be seeing you in your jammies later on. <laughs> oh, now, now we see somebody. Okay, there you go. All right, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, Lori. Lori, if you go up top to view everybody. Oh, now I see you. Yeah, so if you go up top to view everybody. It didn't and work you, for me. And do you see the down arrow? You mean with the two little people? Uh, I... it, it says view everyone, and there's an up arrow and a down arrow. It's in the middle of your screen at the top. No. Huh. OK. Um, no. There's no view everybody on your screen. No, but I'm on an iPad. Oh well, there you go. Scroll up on your iPad, or pull the pull the screen down. Oh, now I just shifted it. Now I see Jim, and now I see you. <laughs> but well, now, no, no, I just still I only seem to be able to see six people at once. I think it's an iPad thing. Oh, well, if you've got a laptop, I don't know when I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Okay. Oh well, I got to see you, Amy. <laughs> Hi, Amy. And now I see Jim. Thank you. Nice All right. Meeting. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Jamie. Bye, Mary Louise. Bye, Bye Lori.